Welcome to Tsavo's Canine Rehab. We are here today to share an incredible story about Boulder, an eight-year-old uh, greater Swiss mountain dog who had neck surgery. And he has had an amazing recovery. We're here to share that story so that everyone out there who may be going through the same thing with their dog um, has a feeling that there are others out there that can help. And we have Gabriella here. Gabriella is the owner of our Boulder boy, and she's going to share a little bit about uh, what she's gone through and a little bit about his history. So, Gabriella, can you tell us a little bit about Boulder? You know, when did you get him? Um, was he a rescue, or what's his story? We got him when he was just short of three months. We had seen photos of him, um, and so when we went to pick him up at the airport, I'll never forget, two crates came out first. I looked inside and they were little greyhound puppies. I'm like, that's not him, that's not him. And then he finally came out and he was the cutest thing. Um, just small, we took him out right away. It was like kisses galore. Um, it was an instant bond. He was such a sweet dog. And uh, we had a cat at the time and he definitely bonded with, with Kahlua. And, just so there was so there was sweet. no problems between the cat and the dog Never, then, no? Never, okay, ever. Cool. No, there's a, they, they would spoon on the bed together and cut up and, and he's just, he's been our, our little, our little partner. He, I got him, we got him five months after I moved back to San Diego and uh, so he instant, instantly became, other than my husband, my only family here. There was a day that we had some friends come over with their puppy and they were playing and they were kind of just playing around in the grass and I noticed something different in him. His hind end would start to buckle underneath him and that was the first thing that made me think something's a little weird here. And then from that point to the two weeks that followed, it was just more of the drunken walk, what they call the drunken walk and the swaying. Um, but he, it was strange, but he was able to walk up until the day he went in for his MRI. When we brought him home after the MRI, uh, he wasn't mobile, and I thought it was the anesthesia still waiting to wear off. And, uh, and then he, there was a moment where he got really anxious, crawled to the door, he had to go to the bathroom, and he, could, he didn't make it. And so we took him right back to ER that night, and he ended up spending the night, and then that's when the doctor said, we recommend um, surgery the very next day, and he did. He had surgery the very next day. Just so you all know, the ventral slot uh, surgery, he had it because he had a severe disc herniation around uh, cervical disc number five and six, and that's what he had repaired. But uh, when Boulder presented to us here at Savos Canine Rehab, he was uh, about uh, 12, 13 days out from surgery and still quadriplegic. And 90% of him end up walking out of the hospital. They get up and they walk a few days after surgery. And unfortunately, Boulder was in that 10% that didn't. Um, <clears throat> so he was in the hospital for 10 days. And um, he would, they would stand him up and he would hold with his hind legs. He would hold up for just a couple seconds, assisted, and then, and then he'd collapse. Yeah. He couldn't walk. The most he was doing was crawling a little bit. Good boy. They said, you know, we definitely recommend physical therapy. Um, what was going through your mind at that point in time? We were, we just, we didn't know what was going on. We, we thought, you know, we were so positive doing the surgery. We thought that he'd be within that 90% that would walk. Here he goes. Baby, you can do it. Good. Oh my God, it's so good. We didn't know what was going to happen. You know, we, you saw us the very first day, and we were hoping for the best, but we really didn't know. We had never seen our dog not walk, and it had, at that point, it had been uh, almost two weeks after surgery. That's two weeks of a dog just laying there and... and Muscles atrophying, yeah. not moving. You would f touch him back here and it was bones. You could yeah. feel the bones. So it was, it was really, um, you know, the hope was hoping kind of out on a limb. You weren't seeing very, very much of any change in the beginning. And even, even during the first week of rehab, it was uh, also a very slow progression in the first week. It was just trying to get everything up and moving again. He hadn't moved for 12 days. He had been in a cage, so to for that first week, you know, the the progression wasn't huge. But come the second and third week, he started really 
stepping up and making changes. He was knuckling his his front paws a lot. I mean, he was just dragging them. And then the day that he, he would, thank God for the harness that we had, because it had two handles and that helped him a lot. But as we were walking him out of the car, instead of dragging both front paws, he placed one paw and that was huge. That was like, he's gonna do this. between week one and week two of physical therapy where we thought we were going to have to make that call. And thank God we decided to give him a second week and that's when he started showing the, the, the real progress. He must have heard us talking and said, oh no, I'm not ready to go. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> to see you was huge because you gave us that boost of confidence you know like my mom calls you and I agree Boulder's Boldy, guardian angel mm -hmm. because you had no doubt from day one that he would walk again and so that's that definitely had a lot um, to do with with the decision to keep going um, and knowing that he was just so short out from surgery it was like we needed to give him a little bit more of a chance to recover um, before we made that call that the quality of life was being compromised. Each patient is very much an individual, um, just as with humans. Recoveries are different. It depends on the kid's age. It depends on are there any other concurrent medical conditions going on. Um, a recovery like this might take anywhere from five weeks in his case to up to five to six months. Um, sometimes you don't get 100% recovery. But the key is, is a definitely a collaborative effort. Uh, you have your surgical team, you have your veterinarian, um, you have the, the compassion and, and the uh, confidence um, from the owner. That is huge. If you're not confident in them and you don't feel that they can do it or they can believe in it, believe it or not, they, they won't try. If you know your dog, you really gotta dig deep and just look in his eyes and say, you know, are, are you done? Are you wanna keep fighting? And I did that with him, and, and I knew that he had fight left in him, a lot of fight left in him. <laughs> so I just feel like you have to make your decision based on how well you know your, your dog. And, and, you know, if you can give him the resources of you know, physical therapy and, and giving him that help, I mean, that's, that's amazing. After everything that we've been through and just seeing um, him not being able to walk, this it's huge. Every day, every walk we go on, I, I don't even look straight anymore. I'm always looking at him and smiling to see his progress because it's, it, it's a miracle. We call him our miracle boy. Thanks to, <laughs> thanks to Maya and her physical rehab. Thank you for joining us on this journey with Boulder and uh, sharing this experience with us. We wanted to present this case to you today so that you all know out there that if you have some sort of a, a medical condition, physical, musculoskeletal condition with your dog, that there is hope. Uh, whether it's surgery is called for or not, um, there is uh, hope out there with rehab and intensive care to get your kid up and walking again. And there are people out there that have experienced what you've experienced. And you're not alone and that there is hope.